said, this session is designed to introduce you to our learning management system and how we learn with the technology at the college. And so without further ado, I'm going to get started. Please feel free to pop your questions into the chat and Ms. Collymore will um, forward those questions to me. Uh, and even though there's a set question for section, session for questions, sorry, <laughs> at the end, you may ask those questions at any time. So we are the Barbados Community College, our, 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 our vision to be a world-class center of excellence in education and training. And our goal is to meet the changing developmental, educational and training needs of stakeholders, that is you, through the provision of relevant high quality uh, programs. And we, we, we hope that uh, in coming to study with us, you will you will see us as that, and you'll be able to go away and say, "I went to a world class institution, and uh, my educational needs were met." All right. So this is our topic for the day: e-learning at, at BCC and introduction to the learning uh, Moodle learning management system. This is our uh, agenda uh, for for the day. Um, you've had a welcome from Ms. Ms. Collinmore. I've very quickly said away. I'm going to say a little more quickly. Then we'll look at what we mean when we use the term e-learning that is in our context at BCC. You look at the learning management system itself. Then I'll show you how you actually use that system. And then at the very end, we will I'll pause again for four questions. Okay. So as Ms. Collinmore would have said, I am the director of the Barbados Language Center, yes but I'm also responsible for e-learning at the college. What that means is that along with my partner, Major Peter Powlett, we're responsible for setting up your classes and providing support, not only for you, but for your teachers who are teaching within that learning management system. We also provide training uh, to the tutors, and we also provide any information which you as students uh, will, will have or, or will need any issues that you encounter during your time with us. As far as e-learning is concerned, we are happy to uh, assist you with those questions. So I've explained who I am, Paul Blackman, Director of Barbados Language Center. Um, this afternoon, speaking to you though in my capacity as coordinator for e-learning. Um, so I'm going to ask Ms. Uh, Collingmore to run just a quick survey so I have an idea of who the people are who are in with me this afternoon so that I can uh, maybe orient any of my examples to a particular field or I will have an idea of what you are asking about. So I see health sciences. Uh, health sciences is a broad area. You could be in nursing, you could be in, um, uh, what's it called, the, the, the MTs, the medical te medical technology. Uh, speaking of technology, I see technology. So you could be in engineering or ar architecture. Um, so that seems to be the, the slant for this afternoon's audience, technology and health sciences. So I have, I have a bunch of scientists with me. Very good, welcome. Um, I am seeing somebody else. So technology is the, um, the majority of people are in the field of, of uh, technology. Very good, okay. So let's then uh, press on, okay, welcome. So what are we talking about when we are talking about e-learning? What do we mean by, 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 e, by e-learning? And so um, in the first instance, we essentially mean teaching with technology. Uh, and what that means, therefore, is that you as a student, one, well, you, you need to have access to that technology. Uh, in the physical form, you will need to have a device, which ideally should be a laptop. And then, of course, you will need to have access to the internet. If you've got a tablet, that 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 works. If you've got a, a, a good smartphone, that works as well. Uh, but on top of that, all you really do need to have access to the internet away from the college. Once you're on campus, the college has uh, Wi-Fi coverage throughout the institution, so you should be able to access the the, the internet almost from anywhere on campus. There are a few spots where. Uh, connectivity is not the best, but for the most part, you can uh, connect to the internet almost anywhere, anywhere on campus. In terms of your device, our suggestion is a laptop because you will have to write essays, you will need to produce papers, you need to produce projects, and therefore it is it, it is better if you have uh, a device with a nice keyboard. But I, I know nowadays tablets come with a keyboard, so you can start your tablet in and you can use the, the keyboard. So smartphones also as well plug into a Bluetooth uh, keyboard, and so you, you can use that. Um, 
but I want to be, be, be want to move away from things like having you, you writing an essay and having to take a picture of your essay and submit that. That can be that can, can be done as well. Um, so ideally, you should have a laptop, and we're working to to find ways to get you that device. So if you do need to get access to a laptop once you are uh, fully enrolled, uh, do speak to your tutors. Uh, we, we're trying to speak to providers to see if they can help provide us with the devices. And the same for internet providers. We're also working towards being able to access the internet when you are away from school um, and not have to, to be to be embroiled in any great amount of spending lots of money and, and so on. So we teach with technology. So you need to have a device. You need to be um, have access to the internet. And of course, I, I if, if, if you're working with technology, you need to be relatively comfortable with with that technology. So I'm, I'm going to ask Ms. Ms. Cottimore to run that second poll for us, which, which looks at your comfort level with technology. I'm not sure how many people are with us at the moment, but maybe you can run it again later um, once some others join us, just to get an idea of your comfort level. Are you very comfortable, moderately, not comfortable at all? Right. Um, and therefore, from what you're saying, you are obviously very comfortable with technology. That is encouraging. So it means then that you will not have a, a, any major problems when you do come come to work with us. But in the event that you need assistance, we, 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 we are here for you. And so if you're comfortable with the technology, then uh, logging into our learning management system then would, would, would not be a problem. So remember, when we're talking about e-learning, we're talking about using a learning management system, which essentially is a space on the internet where you can connect with your with your teachers and your and, and your classmates to do your uh, courses. So we use it to teach, you use it to, to learn. It's a space where you can download the material, where you can access material, where you can communicate with, with each other and with your teachers. And our learning management system is called Moodle, hence, uh, the name of this um, presentation, and you'll see some more about that later on. We also use apps, uh, well, web-based applications, depending on, on, on your class. So um, there, 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 there are apps like Kahoot, Nearpod, uh, Socrative. Your teachers can use that to send your quick quizzes. You can use it for polling in your, in, in your classes. Um, that's, that's, you know, smartphone-based, and it's a very quick and easy way uh, for us to communicate with you. I mean, we even use a, a WhatsApp, you know, um, as I always tell, tell my, 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 uh, my tutors, our official means of communication is email. But if you're about to start your, your web conference and your students are missing, the quickest way to make contact with them is something like WhatsApp. You sign up a message, say, we are online, we're about to start, where, where are you? Um, so even though our official means of communication is our, our email, and I'll talk about that later, later on, um, we also encourage our tutors to use informal means just by way of ensuring that, you know, there's easy and quick access in both ways. They can reach you quickly and you can reach them. At this video conversation, which is what Radio 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 are doing now, we're using Zoom uh, on campus. Our platform of choice is is Microsoft Teams. So you'll be introduced to that once you once you join us. Uh, so there are programs of, of uh, that's our program of choice for the Microsoft Teams. Uh, Counseling uses um, Zoom if you're in the language center or a hospitality. We're currently running a project uh, on teaching and learning online, and we're using Zoom for that project, which, which will run for about uh, about a year. And there's another program called Big Blue Button, which we use from time to time. But our our, our principal flat platform for the uh, the year will be um, Microsoft Teams. And essentially, when we're talking about e-learning, we're looking at the possibility of what we call remote or distance learning, which is what we're doing now, actually. you, I am in, in my office. I, I'm on campus. Uh, most of you are probably at home, or maybe you're my relative, or maybe you are, you're at a, a, a public library, or maybe you're just out, outside in a, in, a, in, a, in a public park. Uh, the idea is that you do not have to be on campus to learn. And that's, I think, the greatest benefit of working with the technology. Um, once you are a different campus, learning does not stop. And as we would have experienced during the, the, the lockdown, and most of you would have, are, are probably coming from secondary school, you, you, would, you would have had a taste of learning remotely when the schools were closed and we all had to stay home and we would have communicated, uh, you, your teachers would have communicated with you uh, remotely using, I think, uh, Google Suite is the one that's used in, in, in most schools. Uh, we use um, our video conferencing platform and we use our learning management system. And in the event of another shutdown, then learning will go on seamlessly 
you just be away from campus, but you'll be able to continue working. So that, that, that's the, the great benefit of teaching with, with technology. And once you are away from campus, uh, learning does not have to stop. Okay. So once you once you join us, then there are, there are three types of courses that we offer. Again, this is all under our umbrella of what we what we what, what, what we call EE learning. Uh, we have what we call web enhanced courses. We have blended or hybrid courses, and we have online courses. A web enhanced course is essentially a face to face course where the material for that class is online, and I'll show you one later on. It's a course that I used to teach uh, when I was in the in the classroom. The students came to to the classroom, but all the material was online uh, to participate in that class. You just needed to have a, a, a device that would allow you to access the internet. Once you could access, once you had that device, then you had access to the course material, the notes, you, you submitted your assignments on, online. Uh, it was a paperless course. Um, so you didn't really need to write anything or look around with, uh, with, with any books. The blended or hybrid courses, this is a term that is being used a lot nowadays in educational fields. It is thought to be the ideal way to learn because it brings together digital technology with face-to-face -face learning. And essentially it is thought to be the best bit of learning because what works online is done online. What works in the face-to-face -face mode is then face-to-face. Um, so you can expect when you join us, certainly to have classes in, in, in this mode, where certainly initially you have your classes on campus and then we will move on online. Those of you with practical courses, you will find that the, the, the theory element will be online. And then of course, you will come on campus for your labs. You will come on campus for your, if you're in, if you're in, well, you know, hospitality, but if you're in hospitality, you're cooking, uh, you're, you're bartending, those, those things that you really can't do online. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you would do um, on campus, whether, whether it's our main campus or the hospital institute, and the other, other material will be posted for you online. And the last type of course then is a fully online course where you don't have to come to campus at all, even in the online uh, context. Um, we, we do our initial classes on campus to make sure that everyone is on board, everyone is briefed, everyone knows what to expect. And then for your exams, we, you know, we, we expect you to come to a center, it may not be our campus, but you need to go to a center where you write your examination in the old fashioned way with uh, pen, and, pen, pen, and, pen and paper. But the open campus of the University of West Indies operates like that. So even though we're saying online courses, and we are capable of, of assessing you fully online, uh, our policy is that exams should be, particularly written exams, should be done live and in person. All right, so that's what we mean when we're talking about e learning teaching with, with technology, you're looking at using a learning management system, web-based apps, it's remote teaching, is a combination of, of technology and face-to-face -face learning, is a combination of approaches to teaching, uh, all to the benefit of our students to make sure that, that, that you get a good, solid, sound uh, education. All right, I'm just gonna do a quick pause here if you've there are any questions, and then we're gonna, we're gonna actually look at the learning management system. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, Mr. Blackman. Okay, fine, we'll move on then. Okay, so this is um, where we find our learning management system. It's on the internet, and so it is It is web-based. Uh, if you know a little about technology, you'll see it says HTTPS, the S indicating that it's a secure site. Um, so technically speaking, your, your, your data, your information, our course material is protected um, from hackers, but as you know, hackers and get into the, just about anything but this is where you will you you will find your your courses all right i've said that it's a secure site so how do you access the site you need a username and a password and of course you will need to have a bcc email and this is the sample of what your bcc email will look like every student gets one and you're required to use this email to communicate with your tutors to communicate with the institution and you will see that when your tutors communicate with you they will communicate from their professional address, their BCC email address. The difference is your email address says at my BCC. My email address will say paul.blackman at bcc.edu.bb. And that's the official means of, of, of communication. And please remember when you communicate, be polite, dear sir, I have a problem there, ma'am. Um, I, I, I didn't get the assignment or my assignment. Please excuse me for being late with my assignment, whatever the case may be. 
And remember that that's also a part of why you why you you, you come to school with us. Not just to do physics and chemistry and and, and, and and nurses, but those critical soft skills that show you you can communicate and communicate effectively. Uh, that's also a part of, of of what we do. And so your your password again will be not just the name of your favorite animal or whatever. It'll be a secure password. And your your username, as you will see in a minute, is made up of your your initial, your last name, and parts of your student ID. Okay. So how how do we use this learning management system? What's its function? What do we do? What what can you do within that learning management system? Here I I just list four of the of the possibilities, the kinds of things that we do. Uh, the first one, the introductions. So this is how we communicate with with our students. And so you get to meet the students, you get to meet the teachers, you, you are introduced to the institution, you're introduced to your course material, you're introduced to your, to your classes, you get to interact with each other. So that, that's, the, that, that's the first thing that you're gonna do. Once you log on, you're gonna communicate with your, with your tutor and say, I've logged into the system, I've downloaded the syllabus, whatever. That leads into course, course material. The, 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 the main function is allow you to access the material that, 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 that you need for your classes. All right, whether it's your syllabus, it might be, it, it'll be handouts, PowerPoints, audio, video, um, all that material we can store uh, online for you and you can access that material, whether you're on campus, whether you're away from class. Again, the advantage of, of working with the, the technology, you don't have to harass your teacher to get a piece of material. You go online and it's posted for you or it is sent out uh, to you. All right, we have discussions, uh, whether it's between the teacher and the class, whether it's between the, the students, whether it's between you and somebody who is remote. For, for example, I'm working on a project this year where my students in the Language Center will communicate with people in Africa who are learning English. Uh, they're doing English business and, and, and tourism. We're doing languages, business and tourism, French, Spanish, German, Italian. And it is, it is my hope that the French students here will communicate with the French students in French speaking Africa and they will have these discussions that go back and forth uh, uh, both in French and English. So the discussion interaction is, is an important part, uh, an important function of the learning management system. And the last one, you're probably cringing, oh no, test, yes. We do have to test you, but I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's not anything painful. So you, 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 you get your assignments, you get your quizzes. So they're quizzes, multiple choice quizzes, you know, matching information. Uh, you have projects that, that, that you submit, you have essays that you, that you submit, and they can all be submitted in the Moodle Learning Management System and return to you uh, within the Learning Management System as well. So again, it's a clean process. Um, you don't have to worry about, about essays and things that a dog at your assignment, uh, you know, nice and clean. Your tutor can receive your assignment, he, he or she can correct it, hand it back to you within uh, the, uh, the learning management system and uh, you then uh, press on and, uh, you know, learn, you, 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 you acquire new, new, new knowledge and uh, you, Hope, enjoy yourself. So that that, in a in a nutshell, is is how we use the learning management system. Um, so intros, course material, discussing, and your assignments, both in terms of submission and return of your assignments. So this is the end of the first part of the presentation, um, where I pause for questions, anything on technology and in, in, in teaching and learning, anything about how we teach with technology. Any questions about the software we use, anything that you need to be able to do, any challenges that you're anticipating, uh, now might be a good time to post the question if you, if, you, if you have one. Not seeing any um, questions, but if you're in the chat, you can post in the chat. Are you understanding everything Mr. Blackman is sharing? Just say yes or no in the chat. So we'll have a feel of the room. We're, we're seeing a yes, Mr. Blackman. Okay. So everything seems to be clear thus far. Thank you so much, everyone. And I'm seeing a very polite yes, please. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's, let's go now to the, um, the second part of the presentation, uh, which allows you to see um, the credentials that you need to uh, 
participate in our online courses. This is our contact information. If you have an if you have a problem, uh, you write to e-learning support at BCC. This is for students, and uh, you will get a response. If you need to speak to someone, we have two lines, uh, and you call. If you call one line, you don't you don't get an answer. You can call the other. Um, and, and the unlikely event that you get no answer at all, you leave a voicemail and we're usually able to get back to you within 24 hours. Uh, it might be a little longer on the weekend. If you call us on a Saturday, you wouldn't hear us on, until Sunday, but within reason, we try to get back to you as soon as possible and certainly no more than 24 hours. If you send an email and you call, then it means that you re really need to hear us and you will hear from, from somebody in e-learning support. All right, so I, I'm going to just stop sharing my screen for, for, for a second to pull up my second document. Um, this gives you a time to uh, reflect. And I'm going to go out to my system and I'm going to pull up a useful document. It's a document that everybody gets um, once they, they sign up. Um, as a as a student, once you are enrolled, sorry, as a as a as a student in, in any of our classes, then uh, you you have access to um, the learn learning management system, and there there is a a, a a process by which we do this. So I'm going to do my second screen share now, and I'm going to show you. Uh, that document. All right. So what you're seeing now is is that document which every student receives um, once they are enrolled, and and everybody has a username and, and, and password. So you will get this document. It has the link to uh, the the website. You click on that. It takes you out, out to the site. You'll get your, your username, just made up of your initial, your last name, and the last four digits of your ID. And our generic password is password one and sign, and you should change that once you once you log on. All right. You will know that you are in the right place because you will see the BCC logo. And your classes for the first semester will all have the use the, 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 the course code 202010 dash followed by four letters which would be the the, the um, letters for a particular course that you're doing so if you're doing in this case this is an accounting course ACCT it's 100 so that would suggest it's a first year course if you're taking say a French course it's FRNH if you're health sciences then it could be um, NURS if you're doing nursing if you're doing um, medical laboratory technology then it then it's HINM which is health information and management um and they're the other ones i can remember now for um health sciences if you're in hospitality then it'll be host if you're in hospital studies or or t t t tourism and travel but you you will you will recognize your course if you're if you're in, in science if, if, if you're you are doing a, a phys course and you see FRNH. Now, obviously, somebody has made has made a mistake, and you've been enrolled in the in the wrong class. You let, you let your teacher know, and he or she will remove that person or remove that course, and make sure that you're enrolled in the right course. Again, our support information: either any support at BCC. Our contact number is two three zero eight six six zero or two three zero eight six six one. All right. So everybody gets this document, and even if you don't get it. Uh, in the unlikely event that you don't get it, you already know uh, what you need to do. And for your first class, anyhow, uh, there will be an orientation and your um, teacher will uh, walk you through the, the process. Okay, so I'm going now to, again, stop my screen share. Um, I'll pause for a few minutes for questions, if any. And then we can actually look at the learning management system and we look at one, a couple of courses really, a French course, which is a web enhanced course. And then we'll have a peek at the library course. So again, I, I pause to allow you to, to reflect. And uh, so there will be a, a slight pause as I move between my, I, I have, 
several screens in front of me as I move between my, my screens and I move from one piece of information to the other. I'm just checking on the site to make sure that everything is ready for you. And then I will bring that up uh, for you in a, in a minute. I'm just making sure that the student who I'm using for today is actually enrolled in the class in which he or she is enrolled. And, uh, we will get started. Hey, Shakespeare is ready for you. I have a question, Mr. Blackman, in the chat. Right, good. Go ahead. Um, and Miss Miss Marshall is asking, Mr. Blackman, for verification, is my username my first and last name? No, it's your initial. So let's say you are. Let's see. I, I'm seeing somebody here called Dane Dane Marshall. All right. So your your email your username, sorry, would be D Marshall plus four digits. Okay. Um, so it's your initial, the initial of your first name, your last name. So my would be P Blackman and then four digits, one, two, three, four, the last four digits of my of my ID. Okay, and I'm and I'm 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 gonna show you um, my 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 student really William Shakespeare in a minute by way of, of illustration. All right, so I am sharing my screen with you. So what you're seeing now is the landing page for the learning management system. Okay, uh, so you know you're you're in the right place because this is this is what you will you you will see, and you get here by clicking on the link in that document that I showed you earlier, or you can come to the Barbados Community College website. Okay, this is our website. You scroll down to the section that says Open Distance and E-Learning. You click on e-learning and it takes you to the page that says e-learning at BCC and there is the link, try them learning remote learning. You click on it and you end up at the same land, landing page. All right, so there, 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 there are two ways to get there. You don't always have to remember that link or if for any reason you, you misplace it, then uh, there's always a way to find it. So this is your landing page. And we were talking about username. So we said that our, our student was William Shakespeare. So his email would be W Shakespeare0797. All right. You have his initial, his last name, and the last four digits of his ID. So he probably has an ID that goes 00620797. And we just take the last four, four digits. He has the password that we would have given. password one number sign. For your own page, you will, you will click on remember username so that you don't have to come up with the username every, every time, but because this is not William Shakespeare's page, it's Paul Blackman's page, I'm not gonna click remember username. You click on login. And so once we log in, it says you must change your password to, to proceed. So you put in the old password. Then you put in the new password. Oops, I slipped. All right, and please remember you have some guidelines here. Your password must have at least eight characters. It must have at least one digit, at least one lowercase um, letter at least one uppercase, at least one of non-alphanumeric character, the asterisk, a dash, or the number sign. And you would have seen that password one number sign that I used. Um, that is the the model for the password that you would use. Please don't use the word password as your password. It's the most common password and it's the easiest thing to hack. So um, please do something a little, a little more meaningful. Nowadays, the trend is to use a sentence rather than a combination of characters but you will pick something that most importantly that you will remember. That's a critical thing with the password. So you can click on save changes. Once I've made no mistakes, 
it says password has been changed you click on, on con continue and so I see all the courses in which I'm I'm enrolled so William Shakespeare is enrolled in three courses he's enrolled in the library course he's enrolled in a French culture and civilization course from 2018 and now he's enrolled in, in a course in 2020 not the username in 2020 FR and H111 um, what this is showing is that even though he would have been enrolled in the class in 2018 he probably failed it silly boy He's come back to do it in 2020, but all your classes, your entire history is there for you to see. All right, so as long as you're a student, you'll be able to access any of your classes up until the time you graduate. Once you graduate, then we remove you from the system and you, you will no longer have access. But once you're enrolled as a student, you can go back and look at notes. So you don't really lose your notes. You don't lose your assignments. You know, God forbid something should happen, your house is burnt, or you know, the famous one, the dog eat, 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 eats your assignment. Um, he can't eat the virtual assignment because it is there for you to go back to and refer to. And it's useful because if you're in an area like language where everything is built on everything else, you can always go back and look at something that you did in year one, semester one, and apply it to year two, semester one, as, as, as the case may be. So it's very useful in that regard. Let's go look at, look at this course. So you will know that you're in the right place because you will see the Barbados Community College logo. Many studies, one community, we are one community, we work together to, to help each other. And you will see your course code and the name of your course. You'll see the name of your tutor. So if you if, if you log into your course and you don't see any of these things, then you know there's, there's always an outside chance because we share the system with other entities that somebody may have the same name and you may end up being enrolled in a course in the public service because they share the platform with us. So always make sure that you are in the correct course. And also at the start of the semester, if you know that you're supposed to be enrolled in four courses, when you log on to Moodle and you don't see your four courses, you speak to your tutor and say, sir, ma'am. I am only seeing three of three of three of my four courses. It could be an oversight, you know, um, mistakes do happen, and that can easily be rectified. Uh, the person was sending me, you know, Mr. Blackman, uh, Dane, Dane, Dane Murray is missing from the class, and two clicks, Dane is enrolled in his business mm -hmm. course, and we're good to go. All right. So most courses will, will have an introduction of, of some kind um, from your tutor. Uh, you would normally have access to your syllabus. In this case, because it, I said it's a paperless course, it's a literature course. So all the course texts are basically extracts from different novels, their different works, plays, um, poetry, drama, um, novels are all enrolled in one. And so we have a people with people at BCC syllabus. All right, let's open it up big so you, so you can see. So this is what you can expect to see in your syllabus, your course title, your course code, number of hours, number of credits, any prerequisites. Um, your description, your, your, your objectives. All right. In this case, I, um, the teacher Paul Blackman provided the course text. So it's a literature course, extracts from various authors. So you have, um, you know, the 70th century authors, Corneille and Racine. And there's Corneille, here's, here's Racine, then we have Moliere, all of the authors and their extracts. Um, so again, the students do, don't have to, to worry about you know, having to go and, 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 and buy the book and so on. It's not that I'm doing anything illegal. These books are copyright is already gone. And so I can easily use the material without having to seek uh, permission from the authors who are long gone. All right. Um, so we have two documents, two PDF files. Here's a link to a website, which helps you with your citations. I will upload you. Always short for online writing lab excellent site you hear a lot more about this when you do your library orientation but this should be one of the links that you keep for yourself to help you with your writing uh, it, it helps with citations grammar uh, vocabulary setting up your documents um, everything you will you will get at, at the owl because we're uh, an art site we're using MLA um, but some other divisions might, might, might use uh, some other site we talked about discussions, and so there, there, there's always a, a social area. We have, a, a, we call it a cafe. It's a place, for, again, for an online class where you can interact with your peers and you can discuss uh, what I call non-course related matters. Um, you know, like moments, what's happening in Green Cricket, who won the, the basketball match last night, that, that, that kind of thing. If you have the time, uh, our classes are so intense, very often you don't have much time to socialize online, but we do hope that you will, have, you will find time uh, to engage in social activities. All right, uh, we, we, you, 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 you can post your marks for you. Here is a case where um, 
the 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 students participate weekly in class uh, they get a grade for it and the teacher can post the grade here so the students can come and, and see their grade. so everything can happen in this online environment and then we have your orientation this is actually the first thing that will happen when you log on um, your teacher will walk you through this make sure that you can access the files make sure that your 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 you have the right software if you're going to look at PDFs you must have Adobe Acrobat you should have access to Microsoft Word uh, or certainly Office Suite depending on your on your, on your course you might have to have uh, P, um, PDF files you might need to have Excel files and therefore you need to make sure that you can access all that material you might have audio video uh, before you do anything make sure that you can access your course material there will usually be some some, some sort of um, introductory forum um, and so I, I've, given, I've given an example here where William has introduced himself to his uh, classmates he's going to add a new discussion topic you include your topic and you you say your piece so if somebody has already um, commented you can reply so William is going to, re to reply to himself you can click on reply Let's see pleased to meet you Guillaume Guillaume is, 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 is the French for William and he posts to the forum 30 minutes in which to edit. So if you make a mistake, you spell you don't make correctly, you can go back and, and correct it. Also, if you say something inappropriate, you can, you can take it back or your teacher can jump in and uh, make, it, make a correction. I know how, how we navigate. These are called breadcrumbs and you move between them to get back, either in this case to the orientation or to the entire course. So this is the first thing that will happen. You will spend some time making sure that you are ready and then you jump into your material material all right um here you've got some web links you've got a worksheet so again you answer your questions you upload them to, to a file to a forum your classmates comment on the things that you said and there is that interaction that that level of discussion that i i talked to you to you about uh usually in the 18th century we usually watch um a film uh, by Laclos. It's called Les Liaisons Dangereuses, which you may have known, which you may know as Dangerous Li Liaison. And then after you watch a film, usually in class, you watch, you watch a film in class, and then we take the discussion online. And then that discussion would last uh, about a week. So there's that discussion element that I that, that, that I talked to you um, uh, about. This kind of course then has a, a, a combination of media. We have audio, we have, we have, we have, we have video. Uh, and there's some writing. And then I, I thought about assignments. So here is your class project. All right, your project is due on, well, it says May, May 20th. Obviously the teacher, teacher made a mistake. It should be October 20th or December 20th. You have your guidelines. You have a place where you upload your project. And then if you have any questions related to your project, here's a forum where you, where you can ask questions about your, um, anything that you need to know for for the project okay so that this is this is a as i said this is what we call a web enhanced course this is a course where you meet face to face but all the material is on is online all right any questions about that particular course or or or, or the structure or the content of any of the courses that you will encounter because i want i want now to show you our library course uh Normally, everybody is enrolled in, in this class. Um, this is the, the library course. All right. And it has a ton of information for you. Everything you need to know about the library is included here. You, you cannot go wrong. But you have an orientation as well. And they would explain to you about the library, its functions, and the, and the library site. Uh, but certainly, it is useful for you to have this you don't have to call up the library or go into the library, everything you need, you need some information. Everything is provided for you here on online. This is a library course. I don't want to go into much into it because then you, you will have a chance or you have, maybe have already had a chance to do your library orientation and learn about the library and the services that are offered. All right, so, that's, so this, this is the, the Moodle Learning Management System. Um, it's, it's, it's an ever increasing uh, important part of the way we do business at BCC as we seek to use technology to ensure that you have um, 
the best possible opportunity for, for learning. Um, it's not the only way, uh, but it's an important tool in how we deliver our, our programs and you are invited to make maximum use of the, of the technology uh, to enhance your learning, uh, to ensure that you make the most of, of your state or world-class institution. Okay, so we're coming up. Uh, um, maybe I spoke a little quickly today. Normally I finish by uh, after 45 minutes, but today we are at 40 minutes and I have pretty much covered um, what I I want to. So I'm, I'm going to, to pause uh, for um, questions. Um, I, I, I may have one or two more comments to make based on fast questions, but I'll open the floor to you to um, any questions you may have. It seems that you were very clear, Mr. Blackman. There are no questions at this time in the chat. Excellent. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the questions I would have been asked, asked in the past. Um, somebody asked about internet connect connectivity. What happens if you're in a class and and you get not knocked off? Um, that's that's one of the things that 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 could happen. It's it's not your fault. It it, it would suggest that maybe um, you know it's a, it's a day of heavy traffic, and um, you know there's con congestion. The internet slows slows down. Video conferencing tends to use up a lot of bandwidth. Um, so your teachers will, will, will understand things like 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 that. Um, again, the question is, what happens if I don't have access to to, to internet away from uh, from from school? Then uh, we're trying very hard to make sure that there are places on campus where you can work. Um, and we're also actually working to see how you can access the internet. We 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 we're, we're talking to both providers, the digital and flow. Uh, having students be able to access the internet away from school, so that's something that that's being worked on. And then the earlier one that I that I addressed, what happens if I don't have uh, an appropriate device? We're also working on helping you uh, acquire devices. There are, there are places on campus you can go to the library where you can use a computer. So if you don't have a computer at home, or if you don't have a, a powerful enough device at home, then uh, you can make provision. I believe, and the library will speak to you more on this. To use the computer in the library, so you you need to practice to organize your schedule so that for those things that you need a computer for, and in the internet, you arrange to do those when you're on the compound, and then the your other activities which don't necessarily involve the internet or a device, you can do from 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 at home. So we are here to to assist you, not not just in terms of of of, of teaching you but ensuring that you have access to the tools that will allow you to be successful in your area of choice. All right, so there are the, 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 the two that stand out from the questions I would have been asked over the last uh, week uh, that, would, that would, have, would, have, would have come from um, the, the, the students. As a PC student, you have access to Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Office 365. Um, and uh, if you're in technology, I believe technology students have access to a license for AutoCAD for the duration of their stay with us. So again, there are some of the benefits of, 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 of working with us. If you're in the Language Center, uh, we, we have access to an online um, language lab, uh, which, is, which is as good as if you were in the physical lab on our, on our campus. So there, 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 there's a variety of technologies that, that, that we use to, to assist you in the uh, learning process. So, you know, we, we do make the effort and we, we invite you um, to participate um, in, in your sessions, to, to ask questions, to don't, don't, don't assume that your, your, your question is too dumb or, um, oh yeah, well, if, if I say this, somebody will, know, will, will think that I'm city or whatever. That, that's not our approach. Remember, we are a community of, of learners uh, and we're here to, to help one another. Uh, both teachers and students are, are learning and that's and that, again one of, one of the joys of, of, of technology. It's a great leveler. Um, you know, we're all in this together. We're all learning learning together and certainly uh, if you are, as you say, you know, comfortable with the technology, you can help your, your classmates. Um, with any issues that they have. So having said that, I'm going to hand back over to um, our counselor 
who I think will wrap up the session or uh, give any closing remarks from Council and Facebook.